Hello everyone, welcome to your partner in education, Agile Rank Mate. Today, we're going to be looking at our new series, Kitty Toolkit. Now, the Kalinga Institute of Industrial Technology is a deemed to be university in India, and uh, it's based on industrial technology. So in order to enter this institution, it conducts an exam called the KIIT entrance exam. Now, what we have are sample questions of uh, which give you an idea of what the exam might look like. So today we're going to be looking at some of those questions in detail and we'll let you know how to solve them as well. So let's start off with uh, solutions of questions in chemistry. Here comes our first question for the day. A mixture of ethane and ethene occupies 41 liters at one atmosphere and 500 degrees Kelvin. The mixture reacts completely with 10 by 3 moles of oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. The mole fractions of ethane and ethene in the mixture are We've also been given the value of R as 0.082 liter atmosphere per Kelvin mole. So we need to find out the mole fractions of ethane and ethene found in 41 liters. Found in a volume of 41 liters at one atmosphere pressure and 500 degrees Kelvin. So let's look at the question itself. Now, what are the values that are given to us? We know that there are two compounds in this particular mixture. That is ethane and ethene. The formula of ethane is C2H6 and the formula of ethene is C2H4. The volume, the total volume is 41 liters. The total pressure is one atmosphere and the total temperature is 500 degrees Kelvin. The mixture reacts completely with 10 by 3 moles of oxygen. So that's the number for number of moles for oxygen. The pro end products are carbon dioxide and water. We need to find out the mole fractions of ethane and ethene in the mixture. We also know the value of R, which is the universal gravity, no, which is the universal gas constant. The value here is given as 0.082 liter atmosphere per Kelvin mole. Now, for the mixture, the gas mixture of C2H6 and C2H4, we have the volume, the pressure, the temperature, and the universal gas constant. Now, what law uh, relates all of these quantities? That will be the ideal gas law. Now, according to the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT, where P stands for pressure, V stands for volume, R stands for universal gas constant, T stands for temperature, and N stands for number of moles. So now we'll be finding out the number of moles for C2H6 plus C2H4, this mixture. So now let's put in the values that we've given that were, that are given already. Pressure is one atmosphere. Volume is forty one liters. Universal gas constant zero point zero eight two. Temperature five hundred degrees Kelvin. Now we can convert the decimal to a fraction. So we get 41 in the numerator and the denominator we get 82 by 1000 times 500. 500 goes into 1000 twice. 82 divided by 2 gives you 41. So therefore the number of moles is 41 upon 41. Which, so when the numerator and denominator are same, the fraction will be equal to 1. So the number of moles 
of the mixture of C2H6 and C2H4 is one mole. So we will consider, this is now we're doing an assumption, let's consider C2H6 has X moles and C2H4 as one, has one minus X moles. So these are basically the mole fractions. So uh, if, we, if we can find out X, we'll get the mole fraction of ethane and then uh, subtracting that from one, we will get the mole fraction of ethene. So how do we go about it? We will need to use the reaction with oxygen. So C2H6 plus oxygen gives carbon dioxide and water. So we need two carbons and we need to multiply by two, CO2 by two and multiply H2O by three in order to balance the carbon and hydrogen. So now we require seven uh, so we have seven on the right hand side, but we only have two on the left. For that, we divide seven by two. So uh, the division cancels out the multiplication. So we get seven oxygen atoms here and seven oxygen atoms on the right hand side as well. For C2H4, we will do the similar process. So Again, two, co two needs to be multiplied on for CO2. Two needs to be multiplied for H2O in order to balance carbon and hydrogen. The oxygens that we have on the right-hand side will be four plus two, so that's six. So we need to multiply three to, uh, to oxygen. So we now have the balanced equations for the combustion of ethane and ethene. Now remember, in this question, the mixture reacts completely with a given amount of oxygen, which is 10 by 3 moles. So since the mixture reacts completely, 7 by 2 of oxygen will react with x moles of ethane. And Three moles of oxygen will react with one minus X moles of ethene. And that will give us the total amount of moles, which is 10 by three, because complete reaction. The reaction complete, there is a, there is the mixture, which reacts completely with the given amount of oxygen. So therefore, whatever values of ethane and ethene are present, they react with 10 by three moles. So therefore, it'll be a good way to find out the value of X. So seven X by two plus three minus three X. Now we can write that as seven X minus six X divided by two plus three equals 10 over three. So we can pull that here, pull the three to the right hand side. Seven X minus six X gives you X over two. And then we have 10 by three minus three. So that's 10 minus nine over three, which is equal to one by three. So we have X by two equals one by three. We need to multiply two, we need to bring two to the other side. So division turns into multiplication when it goes to the right hand side. So therefore X will be equal to two over three. So since X equals to two over three, the value of X will be approximately equal to 0 0.67 in decimals. This is the mole fraction for ethane. Now the mole fraction for ethene would be one minus X, 
which will be 1 minus 2 by 3, which is 1 by 3, which is 0 0.33. And this will be the mole fraction for ethene. So the mole fraction for ethane is 0 0.67 and the mole fraction for ethene is 0 0.33. So among the following option, the one that is correct is option C, 0 0.67, 0 0.33. The first value is for ethane and the second value is for ethene because here we have the word respectively. So that provides the order. So the other options, A, B, and C, A, B, and D are incorrect. C is the only correct option. The reason being the calculated values do not match with the other options. So therefore, they're incorrect. Now, let's look at another question and wind this up. A 100% pure sample of a, a divalent metal carbonate weighing 2 grams on complete thermal decomposition releases 448 cubic centimeters of carbon dioxide at standard temperature and pressure. We need to find the equivalent mass of this metal. So, how do we start off with this question? Well, first of all, let's decipher what the question is about. The first line says, a 100% pure sample of a divalent metal carbonate. So if you notice that carbonate, which is the ion CO32 minus, so carbonate has a valency of minus two. So therefore, whatever metal you add, it should satisfy this valency. So we have M2 plus and CO32 minus, forming together to form a divalent metal carbonate. Again, reason why divalent, again, it's because M has a charge of plus two by itself, CO3 has a charge of minus two together. Now, weighing two grams, this is the given mass. Now it says complete thermal decomposition. So we're having a decomposition reaction where MCO3 decomposes to form other compounds. And it releases 448 cc of carbon dioxide. So what it means is that MCO3 on thermal decomposition forms carbon dioxide and metal oxide. So this is the reaction that we have. The equivalent mass of the metal is what we need to find. Now, we're given the fact that two grams of MCO3 yields 448 cubic centimeters of carbon dioxide. Now, when it comes to the number of moles and volume, one mole in general yields 22,400 cc. This is in general. Now, since we have a relation between mass and volume, we can use that relation directly. So 448 cubic centimeters of CO2 is formed when you have two grams of metal. I mean, two grams of metal carbonate. So therefore, one cc of carbon dioxide is formed when you have two by 448 grams of metal carbonate. Now using this logic, if we wanted to find out the mass of one mole of the metal, one mole of carbon dioxide, so 22,400 cc of carbon dioxide will be yielded 
from 2 by 448 times 22,400 grams. So that will be the mass of the entire metal carbonate. So in order to do that, we can see that 2 divides 448 224 times. 224 cancels out 224 in the numerator. What we get is 100 grams of MCO3. So 100 grams of MCO3 will yield one mole of carbon dioxide. Well, this is what we call molecular weight. So now we have found out the molecular weight of MCO3. We will find out the molecular weight of the metal. Molecular weight of metal. Now reason why we consider 100 grams as molecular weight, I will explain. Now in this reaction, you see that one, one molecule of MCO3 decomposes to form one molecule of metal oxide and one molecule of carbon dioxide. So what it generally means is that one molecule of MCO3 produces one mole of carbon dioxide, one molecule of carbon dioxide. So if we had a certain amount of MCO3, the amount of CO2 produced would be that same amount. So if we have one mole of CO2 produced, then the number of moles of MCO3 would be one. So the mass of that would be its molecular weight. That's the principle used here. So now we look at the molecular weight of the metal. That will be the molecular weight of the compound minus the molecular weight of carbon and oxygen in its qu given quantities. So the weight of carbon is 12 gram atomic weight and the weight of oxygen, three, mo three moles of oxygen would be 16 times three. So we have 100 minus, in the bracket you have 12 plus 48, that's 60. So 100 minus 60 is equal to 40. The molecular weight of the metal, M, is 40. What we need to find is the equivalent weight. Now the equivalent weight is a quantity which is obtained by dividing the molecular weight over the valency of the metal. Now we know that the valency of the metal is 2 because the question says a 100% pure sample of a divalent metal carbonate. Now why is it now we know that it's a divalent metal carbonate because the formula is MCO3. One atom I mean one uh, uh, ion species of that metal reacts with one carbonate ion. I mean it form it bonds with one carbonate ion. So that means the metal will have a charge of plus two, which means that it is divalent. So now that we know that its valency is two and its molecular weight is 40, the equivalent weight will be 40 divided by two, which is equal to 20. So if we look at the options, it is clear that option B, 20, is the correct answer. So do in, let's uh, rewind this from the start. What we did is we identified the metal carbonate. We found out its molecular weight. And from its molecular weight, we found out its equivalent weight because we knew its valency as well. So we had divide the molecular weight by, by the valency to get its equivalent weight. And that's how we got option B, 20, as the answer. Now... That is the end for today's video. If you want to reach out for more of our videos regarding Kitty or other important examinations, then please do not forget to check us out on YouTube, Agile Rank Mate. In order to receive our latest content, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. If you like the video, then you can share it with your friends or you can send your views in the comment section again down below. So, until we meet again, take care, stay alert, bye-bye for now.